Hi everybody, my name is John T. I know that this is a slight change in setting, but I'm staying at my dad's for the weekend and I still wanted to get a review out to you guys. So today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Iron Maiden album, Senjutsu. Yes, British heavy metal legends, Iron Maiden, are back with a brand new album. Six years after the release of their last full-length album, the Book of Souls, which at over 90 minutes really was full length, their longest album to date in fact. And while I personally didn't find it to be anything extraordinary, it did at least serve as another reminder that Iron Maiden, even in this late stage of their career, are still more than capable of writing some good tunes and delivering some great performances. Which has really been the case with pretty much every album the band has released since 2000's Brave New World, when Bruce Dickinson and also Adrian Smith returned to the band. So, since it's been six years since their last album, marking their longest gap in studio albums to date, and that the bulk of this album was actually recorded over two years ago, there is still plenty of hope of being presented with another quality Iron Maiden album in 2021 which could have easily been the case given how much I really liked the lead single to this album, The Writing on the Wall. A track whose pacing and general vibe isn't exactly what you would expect from Iron Maiden, but the burning guitars, gritty bass lines, pounding drums and epic vocals certainly are. Bruce Dickinson, for the age that he's now at, delivers a great vocal performance on this track, I like the tune as well, uh, the hook is strong and memorable, and I actually like the dark, desert, southern rock vibes uh, that come through in the guitar riffs, which, by the way, are incredibly catchy. Honestly, this is one of my favourite songs that Iron Maiden has released in the new millennium, but unfortunately, the rest of the album, to one degree and another, doesn't live up to that standard. We have ten new tracks here, and a runtime of just over 80 minutes. And much like the band's last record, The Book of Souls, this album's length comes as a result of the inclusion of four 10 plus minute tracks, three of which placed at the very end of the album, one after another. We'll talk more about those in a moment, but to take it track by track, uh, the record kicks off with the title track, and there's plenty to like about it. I like the swaying, waltzy groove of the song. It's another sign of Iron Maiden still willing to try different things in this stage of their career. And I really like the emotive vocal melodies on the chorus too. But there's also things that I'm not all that big on. Like how the guitars don't have quite as much bite in the mix as I would typically want from the band. And the sound of Bruce Dickinson's voice sounds off like he can't pronounce his consonants quite right, especially at the start of the song. It's also one of many moments on the album, especially on the first disc, where, for some reason, we have an overlaying string synth, which I don't really like, and there are three reasons why that is. One, it's lazily applied, in that no more than one note is played at once, they only play in unison with the melodies or guitar chords, and sometimes play a bit out of time. Two, it's not needed. These songs would sound better without it, it actually sounds quite ridiculous. Three, its sound doesn't change. All but one of these tracks on this first disc has this exact same monotonous, lazy, unnecessary synth. This even occurs on the more mid-sized run-of-the-mill Iron Maiden songs like Stratego and Days of Future Past. The former of which, once again, has some guitars that, especially given the vibe of the track with its galloping drums and bass line, I wish carried a bit more grit. But even if it did, it's still essentially a worse version of a kind of track that Iron Maiden has done at least three times before. Days of Future Past, because of its more brutal and intense performances, uh, more memorable melodies and dynamic rhythm changes, is a track that I think goes down a lot better. But 
you know, it's just a shame that that bloody synth had to be put in on the chorus. However, I do like the fourth track, the longest track on this first disc, Lost in a Lost World. I like the strings and the ranging guitar textures in the first two minutes, even though what they're playing does get pretty old quite fast. But I also like the multiple rhythmic changes that take place, in addition to a beautiful outro with Bruce Dickinson's emotional vocals over some gentle bass arpeggios and pretty strings. So again, why Iron Maiden could make strings sound great on tracks like this, but not everywhere else, is beyond me. Now, the second disc for the album contains four long epics, which, thankfully, aren't anywhere near as littered with terrible synths. The best of these four tracks is easily the first one, Darkest Hour, a moving power ballad which lyrically seems to be told from the perspective of Winston Churchill during the Second World War. It only makes sense given that war has been the topic of many an Iron Maiden song over the years. The track is bookended by some beach sounds, which more than likely symbolise the 1944 Normandy beach landings. And like I said, the vibe of this song, in addition to Bruce's vocal performance, is very moving, and has a strong attention to detail. It kind of reminds me of that off 1982's Children of the Damned off the Number of the Beast album. It's a great song, easily one of my favourites here. I also really like the song Death of the Celts, um, the sound of the clean guitars that bookend the track are excellent. And there's almost an old, timely feel in a lot of the campy guitar melodies on this track, as well as in the swaying triplet grooves. I also love the orchestration that kicks in around the 8 minute mark. Unfortunately, the two remaining tracks of this second disc are nowhere near as good. They both follow a very similar by-the-numbers dynamic structure, they're both bookended with slow, quiet intros and outros that sound very similar to one another, um, and are filled in the middle by some stereotypical maidenisms. And in the case of the song The Parchment, we have a severe lack of entertaining riffs and rhythmic changes to help justify its 13 minute length. It's boring, honestly. The closing track, Hell on Earth, is at least a lot more varied in dynamics, but it doesn't really have anything that helps end the album with a bang, not really anything to remember the album by. To be perfectly honest, it took a lot out of me to listen to this album and get my full views on it across. And in summation, I do think that there are some good tunes on here, as there are on many an Iron Maiden album in this recent era of theirs, and I also think that there are some brilliant performances too. They're more than capable of that. But much like certain albums like Dance of Death and The Final Frontier, this is an album that I don't really think all that highly of as a whole. Because while there are some albums in this late act of Eyed Main's career that I thought as a whole were legitimately good, like Brave New World, and A Matter of Life and Death, this album isn't really one of them. But what did you guys think of this album? Let me know down in the comments section. And if you haven't listened to it, I'll leave links for you to listen to it down in the description. Also, if there is anything that you would like to see me review in the future, please let me know in the comments. I'll at least give every recommendation that comes my way a listen. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.